Happy opening day. And Jessica Mendoza is here for the start of the baseball season. Let's do some more lessons from ESPN Bet for baseball. The Yankees number, Jess, is 91 and a half wins. Are we going more or less? I've got more. And that's a big shock to a lot of people, especially Garrett Cole starting on the IL. But this team is not 25th in baseball in their offensive production. In fact, they added Juan Soto. They got Alex Verdugo. Aaron Judge will have runners on base for a change when he slugs and you know that's going to happen. I really believe the Yankees are going to win over 91 games. I mean, a fascinating season for them. Let's go to the Braves more or less. Their total is 101 and a half wins. This is the best team in baseball on paper, Greeny. They led last year in every single offensive category. Ronald Acuna Jr. by the 73 steals and 41 home runs. I feel like that does not get old. They add Chris Sale. They add Jared Kalanick. This team got even better. And then let's go to the Dodgers, who are the, are the other team that, at least in theory, got much, much, much better with the addition of Shohei Otani. And then we wait and see where that winds up netting out. Their total is 103 and a half. What do you think? I've got less. And the reason is, Greeny, is this team, it's not about the regular season. They know they can win 110 games. Shoot, they could break the record. But what does that matter if you don't win in October? Mm -hmm. So I see this team getting the division, doing what they need to do, shutting it down so they can finally produce when it matters most. Yeah, it, it, October has not been kind to them. Now, the Shohei Otani thing obviously hangs over the entire sport. You and I were having a long conversation about it. It is a situation in which there are right now infinitely more questions than there are answers. My question for you is... How should we expect it to impact him and them on the field as the season starts? It's going to depend on how much more truth comes out. And I feel like there is still a lot more questions, as you mentioned, that need to be answered. I feel like it's not going to impact him until more information that goes against his statement. If the things that he's saying is not true, that is going to be a massive distraction, especially when you think about how deep it goes. My biggest takeaway from that whole entire thing, though, is – I don't believe the first time that he found out Greeny yeah. was in front of the whole team like everyone else, which then tells me what else is there to uncover. Now, I feel like this is going to take a, a long time, and no one compartmentalizes better than Shohei Otani. He's already shown that. That's really the point. I, I, I have said many times now on my radio show, I find the specific version of the events he is offering right now to be very difficult to believe. But to your point, it feels like it's going to be a very long time yeah. before this is adjudicated one way or another. So to use the overused term distraction, is this going to be one that impacts the Dodgers? No. I really believe Shohei Otani, unless something dramatic happens that takes him off the field, which I agree with you, I don't see something like that happening over the course of this season. I firmly believe that Shohei Otani and the Dodgers are able to put this behind them. The media is still going to ask questions. They're still going to come after him. But what he's shown so far is his ability to take big events like this mm. and still be able to play ball. And that's exactly what he's going to do throughout the season. And then let me circle back to the Yankees here because you said the name Juan Soto. And that obviously is such an interesting X factor. The news on Garrett Cole's elbow, it could have been worse so that actually worked out pretty well for them. Judge and now the addition of Soto. Just another thought on what you expect him to add to a Yankee team with high expectations. He's going to slug and he's going to get on base. And this is exactly what the Yankees needed. I mean, this is someone who's going to hit in front of Aaron Judge. The fact that he's going to have someone on base. Greeny, Aaron Judge career-wise has 99 home runs. 64 of them are solo shots. Huh. Like, wrap your mind around that. The dude hits bombs. We know it, but no one's on base. Juan Soto is going to a stadium for lefties. You could not ask for a better one. And he's left the Padres where it was like the worst for him. Mm -hmm. So him being able to slug and what he does the best is also get on base in front of Aaron Judge. All right. We're putting her to work. Jessica Mendoza on baseball's opening day is going to first make some hardware predictions. Here we go, Jess. Who is going to be the American League's most valuable player? I've got Juan Soto, and we talked about him earlier. And not only is he going to get on base screeny, but he is going to slug like we've never seen him. His career high has been 35 home runs in a single season, and he is going to go 40-plus. Why? Because he's in Yankee Stadium. And, oh, by the way, he's a free agent. He wants to get half a billion dollars. He does it in a Yankee uniform this year. Yanks have so much riding on his season this year. How about the National League? Who's going to be the MVP? Fernando Tatis Jr. And this is a guy who's not getting a lot of talk about because San Diego Padres have struggled. He is the best outfielder in the game right now. We've seen what he can do offensively, run the bases, all the different things. 
This is the season he puts it all together. If the Padres make the postseason, which a lot predict they will, it's got to be on the back of Fernando Tatis Jr. And then as far as the Cy Young, give me both, American and National League Cy Young winner. Tariq Skubal. Now, a lot of people don't know about him because he pitches for the Detroit Tigers. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe against Garrett Cole. He was the best pitcher in the second half of the season last year. His changeup, 50% chase rate, and only a buck 67 hitters hit against. He is the guy for me, especially in the American League. Then Spencer Strider in the National League. This is the Braves team we've talked so much. He is the top-notch pitcher. And by the way, he added a curveball to go along with the slider and the ridiculous fastball he already has. All right, so Jess is here. The season starts today. So we're going to make our predictions, or she's going to make hers. So we asked her to name first off the final four. So these are her predictions. She has the Dodgers and the Braves in the NLCS, the Rangers and the Orioles in the ALCS. Oh. Now we're going to smash the helmets here to make our picks. Now to be clear, the last time we were here, you had the bat and you were smashing things up, and I think we broke some lights. I broke a window. I and and well. a window. <laughs> Don't break three. Unfortunately. So and if won't let me hit them into the... If there's one thing I've learned, legal does not have a sense of humor. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to smash them the way we normally do. So which one do we we doing first uh, National, National League. League. Okay, National League. We got the Braves and the Dodgers. Smash the team that you think is going to lose. Oh my! Wow! Goodness, that evaporated. <laughs> All right, so uh, swing. That's we've got the Braves. We've got the Dodgers staying alive. This is the toughest the pick, absolutely, That's because legit. the Braves so good, but the Dodgers, I absolutely believe they're going to get it done finally in October. I mean, that's a very yeah. big helmet. Yeah. Just evaporated. Bit, they're not right. made out of cast bit. iron, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure we understand. That was with the next one harder. Okay, Jess. come on. Uh, a little harder. Yeah, a little harder. Okay. Orioles and Rangers. Not the Orioles. Who loses? Please, not my O's. Boom! Yeah! Yes! <laughs> Why are you guys running? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, <laughs> I love it. You're in a batter's box. What are you talking about? I love it. Everyone, everyone's running okay. away. Okay, so you should know. Legler is an Orioles, lifelong Orioles huge. fan. Huge. Which, which helmet did you steal from here last year? Oh, the, uh, the football guys. I took the little Washington helmet. He took the Washington helmet. It's in my Commander's backpack. Helmet. It's my good luck charm. He it's really turned out great. All the time. Okay. Okay. Out. Here we go. Not did so you well. want, did you want about to take that, this Orioles helmet? I think I'm Because we got the World Series pick right now. Oh, you want this oh that's Well, I know where this is going. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know this is going. We knew that yes. was going to happen. I would have done this thing. I would have done No, all right. <laughs> the Dodgers, so a season that begins Man. with so much. Look at that. Look what you did to the Orioles. <laughs> I'll take, can I have this? It's a, it's a visor now. <laughs> it, it, it's now a visor. Uh, very quickly, what you're telling us is that a season that begins with unimaginable yeah. controversy and drama with Shohei Otani, and we discussed earlier this morning, no one really knows how that's going to play out because there are more questions than answers. You think they overcome whatever that is and finally win the World Series. I think this helps them finally figure it out. And they've got diversity with Yoshinobu. Yamamoto struggled last week in South Korea. I think there's a lot with this team that is finally going to bind them together. They have so many stars. We understand what they can do, but they need to figure it out in October. This is a the season they do it. Mm. How do you feel about all this? You're a Met fan. I don't want to talk. Yeah, about it. I <laughs>